Hello and welcome back. I'm glad you've joined me for another couple of chapters of the book The Chocolate Touch. I'm excited to find out what happens next. Yesterday we met a boy named John who really loved candy but his most favorite thing to eat in the whole wide world was chocolate. So if you remember he had bought a box of chocolate at a a candy store that he'd never seen before and he ate that piece of chocolate that was in the box right before bed. So here we go. Let's find out what happens next. Chapter 3. The birds were chirping in the tree outside John's window and the sky beyond was deep deep blue. The bedroom door opened a few inches. Hey sleepy, Mrs. Midas called. Everyone else is up. John put on his bathrobe and his slippers and he walked to the bathroom. His sister Mary was sitting there brushing her teeth and he had to wait until she was finished. Come on, Mary, he said a little upset. Don't take all morning. Here you are, Mary said, handing him the toothpaste. While Mary soaked up her face and washed it, John squeezed a little of the toothpaste onto his brush. The paste was pink. John made a face at his toothbrush. Ugh, didn't seem fair that he should have to brush his teeth with stuff that tasted just like vitamins. Ugh, it's a stinky kind of taste, he said. John opened his mouth and pushed the end of the toothbrush in. As soon as it touched his front teeth, he noticed a delicious sweetness in his mouth. A taste of the best kind of chocolate. He pushed the brush back and forth, back and forth, and the taste grew stronger and stronger. He removed the toothbrush. The bristles were brown. Hey, uh, what kind of toothpaste did you give me? John asked. Mary was drying off her face. It's the same kind as always, she said. It says right there on the tube. Blanco Dent, John read. It was the same kind that they had always had. Why, it's chocolate flavored this time, he said. Boy, this stuff is good. Oh, don't be silly, Mary said. Of course, it's not chocolate. And she hung up her towel and she swished out of the bathroom. John squeezed more of the toothpaste down to his brush and he kept brushing his teeth. Chocolate again. It was marvelous, rich, sweet, smooth, chocolatey chocolate, like that single piece of chocolate from the box he ate the night before. There seemed to be no further need for the toothbrush, so John rinsed it out and hung it up. He squeezed out another bit of toothpaste right on his fingertip this time. He put his finger in his mouth and he ate the toothpaste off. When he took his finger out again, it was stained chocolate brown. John wasted no more time. He put the end of the toothpaste tube right into his mouth and he emptied the paste onto his tongue. It squeezed out like thick creamy chocolate. Mary looked into the bathroom. Hey, what are you doing? She demanded. Oh, yum, was all John would say. John and Mary were a little late getting to the dining room for breakfast. Mr. Midas was already on his train when they sat down for the breakfast table. John ate all the toothpaste, Mary told their mother. Oh, you little sneak, John whispered. Well, you did, Mary reminded him. And that's a waste, isn't it, mother? To eating up all the toothpaste in one day, isn't that a waste? Mrs. Midas was serving their orange juice. Oh, <laughs> Mary, really, she cried. I am sure John was only joking. He was just pretending to eat the toothpaste. No, I wasn't, Mary insisted. I watched him. I saw him squeeze it into his mouth. He said it was chocolate. Oh, dear, dear, protested Mrs. Midas. Chocolate again. Now I know it was just a joke. He was wishing it was chocolate, Mary. Come on now, drink your orange juice, both of you. Your bacon and eggs will be ready in just a minute. As Mrs. Midas left the room, John took up his glass of orange juice and put it to his lips. As soon as he tilted it, the liquid began to flow into his mouth and a happy look came onto his face. Oh boy, this is good, he said at last, lowering the empty glass. Chocolate juice! Mary looked at John. 
Then she looked at her glass of orange juice. It was a bright orange color. She tasted it. It tasted like orange juice to her. This is not chocolate juice, she said. It's orange juice. Orange juice is good for you. Yes, John, Mrs. Midas said, hearing the last few words as she carried in a tray with bacon and eggs. You just need to drink your... She caught sight of John's empty glass. John, she said. Why, aren't you a good boy? That's the first time in ages you've finished your orange juice without having to be told to do so. That's because it tasted like chocolate, John explained. Yeah, okay, Mrs. Midas said. Very funny. But don't tease Mary too much. Remember, she is younger than you are. John silently picked up his fork and sliced the yolk of his fried egg. The yellow yolk broke over the white and he shivered as he watched it like he always did. Oh, Mama can't eat this, he told her. Of course you can, Mrs. Mines said. You drank your orange juice now. Try to eat your bacon and your egg. John scraped up a little tiny piece of egg and put it into his mouth. It immediately became chocolate. Chocolate white, chocolate yolk, but lovely, lovely chocolate. Oh, yum, John mumbled. Chocolate egg! In almost no time, he had finished every scrap of egg on his plate. And then he tried the bacon. The bacon turned to chocolate also. John had never before enjoyed his breakfast so much. After the orange juice that had turned to chocolate juice in his mouth and the fried bacon and egg that had turned to fried chocolate, he ate two slices of chocolate toast that had chocolate butter on it and chocolate jam, and he washed it down with some chocolate milk. <gasps> I am so pleased with you this morning, Mrs. Midas said as she helped John put his coat on. If you promise to eat your lunch at school as well as you ate your breakfast, I'll give you a dime so you can go buy some chocolates. Ah, uh, that's all right, John said. I don't think I need it. Mrs. Midas looked confused as she waved goodbye to John. Chapter 4 John had a bad habit. He had a bad habit of chewing on things when he was thinking hard. This morning he had a lot to think about. What had made the toothpaste taste like chocolate? What had made the orange juice taste like chocolate? What had made the bacon and eggs taste like chocolate? What had made the toast and the butter and the jam all taste like chocolate? Each one of these things had felt the way it had always felt before. The toothpaste had been soft and pasty. The bacon had been hot, crisp, and oily. The toast had been crunchy, and the jam was sticky and lumpy. But everything had tasted like chocolate that he had eaten. Like the chocolate he'd had in bed last night. John put a gloved thumb in his mouth and he thoughtfully chewed on it. His mother had pointed out to him many times that if he chewed on the ends of his gloves, it made little holes in them and that would let in the cold air. But he chewed them just the same every time he was thinking hard. This time he noticed something really weird about the thumb of his glove. Instead of tasting like leather, it tasted like chocolate. John pulled his thumb out of his mouth. The part of the glove that had been in his mouth was now brown instead of black like the rest. He bit the end of the leather thumb again and it came right off in his mouth, leaving his own thumb with nothing on it. John chewed. It was like chewing leather made out of chocolate. Leather that melted like chocolate. And in just a second or two, he swallowed it. The gloves were not new. John had had these gloves quite a long time. He could not understand why he had never thought about eating them before. He tried to tear off one of the fingers, but the leather was too strong for him. But he put it in his mouth and it immediately turned into chocolate. Then he was able to break it off real easy. He popped it into his mouth, chewed it up and swallowed it. It was delicious. Walking along, eating his glove, John did not notice one of the other children from his school, Spider Wilson, until he heard his voice. John's gone crazy! John's gone crazy! Spider yelled. Then he turned on John. Don't they even feed you where you live? He sneered. Spider was in the grade just above John's grade, and he was the meanest boy in the whole school. John gulped down a large piece of the second glove and looked pleased. What's the matter? Spider demanded. 
Do your people make you eat leather? <laughs> this is special leather, John replied. He licked his lips and sighed contently. <sighs> it turns into chocolate as soon as you put it in your mouth. Look! John bit off a piece of the glove's little finger and took it out of his mouth. Now it's chocolate! And then he put it back into his mouth and he gulped it down. Oh yeah, give me a piece, Spider said. Why should I? John wanted to know. They're my gloves. Hand over a piece of that, Spider said. Do I ever go and eat your gloves? John asked him with his mouth full of chocolate. Why should I let you eat my gloves? Those aren't real gloves, Spider said. Whenever one person has candy, he's got to share it with everybody else. That's the club rule. What club are you talking about, John asked. Never mind, Spider said. You better let me have some of that chocolate. And without waiting any longer, Spider snatched up what was left of the second glove. John was too surprised to resist, and he didn't even want to anyway. He had the feeling that he'd eaten enough chocolate for a while, and he was starting to get thirsty. Spider ran only a little way ahead when he saw that John wasn't going to fight him to get the glove back, he started to eat his prize. He stuck that leather right into his mouth and took a big chomp. Spider stopped in his tracks. He frowned and bit deep into the leather again. Ew, it was disgusting. It tasted worse than leather. It tasted like leather that a little boy had made mud pies and snowballs with and who had been petting old dogs with. John thought perhaps he might be getting late for school, so he started to run. He left Spider Wilson on the corner, speeding out the soggy remains of the glove into the gutter. Still giggling to himself about the defeat of his enemy, John walked between the great stone pillars at the entrance of the school grounds. He had gone no more than halfway to the main building when he heard Susan Buttercup calling to him. She was standing near the jungle gym with a lot of her friends. I got something to show you, John, she shouted. As she came running to meet him, he could see that she was waving something in her hand and flashing it as it caught the rays of sun. It's a silver dollar. It's a birthday present I got, she exclaimed, showing him the silver dollar. Isn't it beautiful? The sight of so much money made John forget about how wonderful his day had been. Yeah, that's a really good present, he said. Are you sure it's made out of silver, though? One time I got a whole bag of gold coins for Christmas. Only they were chocolate coins covered in gold wrapping. Of course it's a real silver dollar, silly, Susan said. My daddy said so. You can feel it if you don't believe me. So she handed him the coin. John looked at the coin suspiciously. All right, Susan said. Bite it. Bite it if you think it's not real. Go ahead, bite it. John felt kind of silly. I can see it's real, he said. I don't have to bite it. But I want you to, Susan said. You're not sure it's real. Well, make sure. It's what they always do in the movies. When a cowboy wants to make sure his gold is real, he bites it. John put the dollar about halfway into his mouth, and he bit down. His teeth went right through the coin. The part that had passed between his lips was hard, but sweet, chocolate. Susan could not believe her eyes. She had given John a complete circle of silver and he handed it back with a huge bite out of it. John didn't know what to say. Susan couldn't speak. Tears trickled down her cheeks like the rain down the window. She looked at the piece of dollar in her hand and then she looked up at John whose face was red. He was very embarrassed. <gasps> John Myers, Susan blurted out at last. I hate you! And then she turned and ran away before John could think of anything else to say. Yikes! This book has taken a crazy turn. Every single thing that John puts into his mouth turns into chocolate. Mmm. Wow, he has quite the situation here. And I'm wondering what you think will happen next. Can you imagine everything that went into your mouth turned to chocolate? What if you chewed your fingernails and your finger turned to chocolate? Yikes! It could be quite a problem.
So what do you think is going to happen next with John and his new problem where everything that goes into his mouth turns to chocolate? Let me know. I can't wait to hear your ideas. I'll see you again tomorrow when we'll read another couple chapters out of The Chocolate Touch. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good day.